Hey, and welcome to this video for chatwing.com. So now that your apps are live in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store for your Android devices, it's time to log into your app dashboard for further customization of your online booking system and to set it up exactly the way that your business needs. So the first thing we need to do is log into the system here at chatwing.com. You're just going to need to put in your email address and password that you use to sign up. Once you put in this information, go ahead and click on the login button to log into your dashboard. Right, and now that I'm logged in here, the next thing I'm going to need to do is click on the online booking schedule option here. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on this option. Now your settings page is going to load. Right, now I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here. And you can see here there is an option for admin receives alert SMS. Here we're going to need to put in our phone number. This is going to allow you to receive text message alerts when new bookings occur. So here you can see you're going to need to enter your phone number and make sure that when you enter your phone number it's in the correct format as listed above. Alright, so now that I've entered my phone number, I can go ahead and click on the Save button. Next, we're going to move on to customizing our schedule, services, and details. Alright, so your current online booking schedule has been set up with basic information used to get your apps approved, including some services, providers, and pricing. However, because we have limited access to your business details, it's now time for you to customize all of your booking details exactly how they should be. So on the left hand side here you can see that there's a schedule tab. We're going to go ahead and click on categories under this. Okay, so here you're going to be able to view current services and other details that have already been input for you by our staff. To add more details to an existing service already listed, click on the update button found here. This will allow you to add pricing details, descriptions, and other values as well. After you make any changes here, all you have to do is click on the save button to save those changes. Also, if you'd like to view and customize the time schedule for each service, you can click on the schedule button. So there are going to be two options for you to input times into a schedule. If I click on the blank field here next to one of these days, you can see that the first option here is the time range option. With the time range option, you can specify a beginning and end time here. So for example here, let's say I wanted to choose 12 p.m. and then I can choose for my end time 2 p.m. So you can choose your time range and click on the apply button. And when I close out of this here, you can see that this is my time range. Now you can continue to add more time ranges if you'd like, or we can use the second option, which is time points. In the time points option here, you'll have multiple times that you can choose from, and I can just click on multiple times. You can see it'll be added here. Or if you want, you can even click on the checkbox here, and you can see it'll adjust the times from every 15 minutes to every 30 minutes to modify the scale here. Now just a tip here, if you're using the time range option, you can actually design booking forms to ask clients which time is best for them. You can also ask for the top three times, which will give you more options as far as responding. And this text input field will display on your next step when the client is asked for their name, phone number, email, and other fields that you want to require after they choose the service. Also at the bottom of each booking, your client will be able to request a date and time. So if you plan to utilize this instead of using the time range, then you can simply leave the schedule blank, and then clients are going to be forced to use this and input a desired date and time. So here you can see a sample of what that would look like here, where the client would be able to uh, request what time is better for them. All they have to do is choose the time that they want to use and click on the request button. Alright, so all that we have left here is you can see that I can go ahead and choose my months of availability. And once I've completed all the settings here, I can click on the save button. Alright, and now we're moving on to customizing emails, links, and logos. So in this step, you're going to be able to input your business name and logo, and it's going to display in an automated reminder and confirmation emails that are sent to the clients. Also, you'll be able to customize your direct link website address so that you can share from anywhere. Alright, so what we're going to need to do here is go ahead and head to our settings option. And now under the alias option here, you're going to go ahead and put in your business name. So this is going to... Uh, allow you to adjust your link here. So I'm going to type in just the business name that we're going to use in this scenario. And you can see that the URL has changed to reflect that business name that we've put in at the end of the URL. So now we have our customized link. Now in the app name section, you're going to input your business name as well. And this is how you want to be identified in emails to clients. So we'll go ahead and enter that there. And next you're going to want to upload your logo or any image that you'd like to display in emails to clients. Now, any size should be fine, but if the image is too large, you'll be prompted to upload again. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the upload button here. All right, and once we find the logo that we like to use, we can go ahead and just select it and click on the open button. You can see that that logo is going to populate here so you can see your preview. All right, now all you have to do is click on the save button. All right, and now we can move on to our next step here. We're going to be able to look at design theme and business details. 
So to do this, let's go ahead and click on the theme button here in the top left hand corner. So now you're going to be customizing the design and look and feel of your booking system, which is the theme. Now this design is going to display everywhere that users use your system to book, which includes the floating at the bottom of your website, embedded into a page on your website, from your direct link or alias website page, inside your Facebook page, and inside your mobile apps. So here you can see that you can go ahead and customize the colors and header title however you'd like to. So we'll go ahead and just click on the color here and you can see that you can easily change the color by just scrolling up and down this palette. Or if you'd prefer, you can even manually enter the hex color code. So I'll just go ahead and change a few of these colors here. And you can see that as I'm making these changes here that it's actually adjusting the colors here on the right hand side so you can see this preview. Now an optional but recommended feature here is to upload a header logo. Now to make sure that your logo fits properly, uh, we recommend that your width is set to 600 and you set the height to 80. Now don't worry because after you upload it you can always open the direct link alias web page to see how the banner displays. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the upload button here and select my uh, logo that I'd like to use and click on the open button. You can see here that it's going to go ahead and put that at the top there so you can see how it's going to look. Um, all you have to do is play around with the size of the logo and again make sure that it's in the dimensions that we want to see here so you can make sure that it fits properly in this preview. So here I'm going to just go ahead and upload another version here that is modified to the 600 by 80 dimensions and click on open and you can see that that fits much better here. Alright, so if you're planning on using your direct link alias website page for sharing on, for example, a social media site or in emails, for example, uh, we recommend that you display all of your business detail information. So let's go ahead and click on the business details tab here. And here you can go ahead and fill in all the relevant data for your business, including specific keywords and hashtags, which is going to help you improve your search rankings in Google and across the web. So you want to make sure here that you click on this show on direct link page option and you can fill in some of these details here like the name, the address, keywords as mentioned earlier, hours of operation. So you can see there's a lot of different data that you can put in here and then you can click on save once you've filled in this information. Okay, so here you can see that as I'm actually filling in all this information to the right here, it's going to generate a preview of how this information is going to be displayed. So now that I've actually put in all my information, I'm going to go ahead and click on the save button here and then I can go back to my settings option and I can actually preview this here by clicking on my direct link. Alright, so here you can see that I have my information on my left hand side that I just created in my business details. And then on my right hand side I have my form here to be able to book now. Alright, and now we can go ahead and look at our next step here. Uh, we're going to be looking at how to set up user submission forms. So for this step on the left hand side here we're going to go ahead and go down under schedule to schedule form design. Now after a client selects the service and the date on the first screen of the booking system, the second screen is going to load which is going to require them to input their personal details such as their name, email, phone, and birthday. If there's any other information that you would like to request or require from them, that will be entered as well. Now this form can be customized exactly how you'd like it to appear. Okay, so here you can see in the settings at the top I have my schedule form tag here. Now you're going to notice that in this section that the default word is going to be default. When you add a new question into your form, it should match that same schedule form tag, and that initial word is always going to be default. So this tag can be edited to any word that you like. Of note, you can also assign multiple tags to the same question. So to add a new question, you're going to click on the Add New button here. And so I can go ahead and put in my different fields here. Alright, and once you've entered in your question here, you can click on the Save button. Now another note here is that the four main default questions available are going to be email, phone, name, and birthday. So it's going to ask this basic information by default. Uh, it's using smart fields which means that the birthday question for example is going to be displayed to the user which will automatically ask for the month, day, and year. Now we recommend that you test the booking system you've designed after completion and that you view the form design to confirm that it meets your requirement. And again as you're adding new questions keep in mind that you can choose whether or not you want the new question that you're adding to be required or not. If you don't choose the required option, then it'll be just an optional question for that particular client. So if you don't choose the required checkbox, then it'll be an optional question. So here you can see an example of how the birthday smart field would display in a form like this. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and look at our next step, which is going to be installing onto a website. And we're going to be looking at a few ways to do this. So there are two main ways that the booking system can be installed onto your website. The first way is by floating at the bottom of the screen or the second way is to embed it into a page. 
So to better illustrate this, here we have a sample. So here's a float that sits at the bottom of your website. It's going to allow users to instantly book appointments from any page on your website. Here you can see how it displays in the bottom right when the user visits. All right, and next you can see what happens when the user clicks on that float. The booking system is going to pop up here in the bottom right. And once the user minimizes that window, you can see here that the float is going to display a small ball in the bottom right corner. And here's an example of a float in your mobile web browser. You can see it displays at the bottom of the screen. Both color and text can be customized from your dashboard. So let's go ahead and look how we would set this up. From the left hand panel here, we're going to scroll down under the install float interface. Click on settings. Now you can go ahead and customize the design display options that you'd like, including the size, colors, and initial display image. At the bottom here, you can see that you have a link that you can click on to preview what you've created. So at the top here, you can see that you can change your float position, adjust the size dimensions. There's a good deal of customization that you can do here. Now after you finish making changes and adjustments here, we can go ahead and click on the installation portion here, this installation tab. So on this page here, the first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and verify your domain. So to do this, all you have to do is go ahead and insert your website domain in the field here. And you're going to click on the verify domain button. Now make sure that you insert your website link exactly how it is on your website, either with HTTPS or HTTP. Next, you're going to need to copy one of the JavaScript code snippets provided, depending on if your site uses HTTPS or HTTP. So if your site is HTTPS, of course, you're going to use this one here or if it's HTTP, you'll use this snippet here. Now, after you have that, you're going to copy it. You can use that to install the code onto your website, and your booking system will begin to float for all visitors. And now we've come to our last step here where we can go ahead and embed this booking system into your site. Now, if you've already completed the previous step, uh, you won't need to go through this final step here. So this is going to allow you to embed directly into the page. You can also modify the width and height. This way it fits exactly in the size that's needed on your site. So to do this, go ahead and head down to the Install Embed Interface section and click on Installation. So now you're gonna go ahead and adjust your width and height to your desired specs. Once you've done this, you're gonna go ahead and copy the iframe code here and paste it into your website. So you can see it's very simple here. That's all you have to do to be able to get this booking system into your website. All right, and that covers this tutorial for chatwing.com. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.